Hey guys, Alex here with Armadillo Armament. Today, we're going to be discussing the degeneracy in the holster manufacturer world. Uh, why they have the easiest job of any firearm accoutrement manufacturer and how they consistently flood that up. If you want to support me, 5% uh, off in Red Pond Shop will remove a pound of junk from the ocean and plant a tree for every single item in that order. You'll get quad nods. Um, I'm just going to be ranting to you guys today. This is completely unscripted. Uh, there is a safe space in the comments for you guys to all just rant about all of these shitty holster manufacturers out there. Just let it rip. Uh, tell me about all your terrible stories and I'll tell you about mine right now. So... You just saw my video a couple days ago, LAS Concealment, how I actually don't hate a lot of their holsters. And that video still remains true. I'm not going to go back and delete that. Um, but ever since then, I decided to uh, buy a 43X holster. This is the LAS Saya, so the same as this 2011 version and my Roland version. This is a Saya 2.0 for the 43X, though. And to say that I've had a miserable time with this is going to be an understatement. Um, to run you guys through the issues, this is oiled now and has gone through 90,000 draws to make it so it just ripped out as much Kydex as, as needed to make the weapon fit, but the holster didn't even fit to begin with, and the bottoming out uh, portion of, of like the retention here, so it's supposed to retain on the light, is still just like, you can feel the scraping, you can feel the warping, it's clearly not modeled to the gun whatsoever. Um, I've tried this with a TLR7 sub and the new sub X. I'll have reviews on all of that in the future, but this legitimately just doesn't work for this firearm. Um, and any normal manufacturer out there would accept a warranty on that, right? You would contact them and say, hey, this is just like non-functional. When I try and pull this out of my pants, it gets hung up 70% of the time and could legitimately be a... <laughs> Could, could kill you in real life, right? If you need to use your firearm and uh, it just completely binds up on the draw and then your draw is just all fucked up. Um, this is a legitimate huge issue. And any company on the planet would say, shit guys, that's a $10 holster that or it costs us $10 to make it. Um, we'll just take this one back. We'll either give them a refund or we'll send them a new one or something. We'll work with them because having a customer on like carrying around a unsafe holster is a huge deal and that's without taking the fact that i'm a youtuber into account i don't expect special treatment from anyone i expect the bare minimum of like human treatment and, and human co uh, compassion so taking my review channel out of the the question which i have had communication with companies in the past so they definitely know i exist um it, it's unacceptable right so I reach out with them and I get completely ghosted for like five days, uh, an entire week since Sunday actually, which once again, customer service can take a little bit of time to go through it. I expect an answer within one or two business days, not five days, but you know what? Maybe that's just me being a little, being an asshole. I don't know, whatever. Everyone says I'm an asshole for criticizing weapons and accessories and whatnot. But yeah, I'll put a picture on the screen right now. The president of the company uh, reached out with me via email and said that they weren't going to be doing a refund for this. Even though in the refund policy, it says that uh, if there's like malfunctions with the holster or there are issues with the holster, they will potentially refund you up to like a certain amount, just especially if you didn't cause any like issues. Um, but because this is a custom holster, they're not going to be refunding me, right? Or they're not going to work with me whatsoever, even a partial refund. So... The president of the company is saying, you know, like, go get, f I don't care if this video gets demonetized, get fucked, Alex, right? Even though our holsters are unsafe to carry, you can get fucked. So I already started a chargeback with my bank. We'll see if that goes through. Otherwise, I'll probably sell it for a loss. Um, I could sit here and chisel it out for 20 minutes and try to make it, a, try to make it workable. But there are so many things I... Can mess with on my gear and there are so many things that i can allow to be you know like not like the highest quality looking at my helmet right here if my scrim isn't the highest quality who cares me if my bungee isn't the best it's fine even if my like nods aren't the best that's fine but a holster is arguably more important than like an optic or a light or 
mags. I don't know. Like, a, a holster is such a huge deal to get right that the fact that LAS won't take care of me whatsoever is just absolutely insulting. So, once again, I recommended the SIA 2.0 like a week ago. I made a video on it. I'm sure it'll get some views eventually. My videos always take a little bit of time. Um, go watch that video if you want to hear my opinions on this SIA, and I technically stand by them, but the 43X is a absolute non just non-starter. It doesn't work at all. Uh, you can hear the grinding there. Uh, and on top of that, the president of the company, literally the president, not the customer service guy, a president will tell you to go fuck yourself. So yeah, don't support LAS concealment anymore. I'll put something in the comments on the other video saying I no longer support that company. Even if they tell me they'll refund it now after I'm doing the chargeback, I will never support that because a warranty for something like this should just be a given. That's the end of the first part of my tangent. The second part of my tangent is going to be just ranting about holster manufacturers because every single one of them are just not getting it right. And I do not make holsters. So technically, I don't know the issues that these manufacturers go through. I have to assume it's a little bit difficult. Um, I have to assume every business out there has has difficulties, especially with like tooling, mass production of, of items. Um, and you know, like, I expect a certain level of issues with basically any product out there. Nothing is going to be perfect. But I expect companies, holster manufacturers specifically, to get their heads out of their asses with what they're charging and what they're providing the consumer. So I'm going to start at the top. Uh, like I said, LAS is a non-starter. But I just want to bring you guys through just all the issues that I've had with recent manufacturers. And some of which are fantastic. I'll be telling you about them. I'm just going to grab the first one that's in front of me, the Vetter Light Tuck. I'm going to have a review of this uh, sometime in the future. You see this all over Reddit. This is a moderately expensive holster, not nearly as expensive as something like LAS, which is more than $100, or Tenacore, that's more than $100, but I'll put the price on the screen. I think they're like 50 or 60 bucks, um, but people recommend this everywhere. For a cheaper holster, it's okay, but the clip sucks, the wing sucks, the retention sucks, the quality of the holster isn't super good. There's no active retention, which I know this is for a weapon light, so it can be a little bit different, but regardless, there's no active retention. So, anyone that recommends this, uh, I immediately know that they've never used this holster. It can technically get the job done, and it's not exorbitantly expensive, but would it kill them to have different clip options, and to not be using this super shitty 3D printed wing. Um, another thing I forgot to mention, I ordered this, I'll put a picture on the screen right now, I ordered this for my USP Tactical uh, probably about a year ago when I first got it, because I wanted to do this really cool collateral uh, intro to my video where I drew and shot the targets, and um, I got that, and I spoke with customer service beforehand. And they told me that it would work for a USB 45 tactical. And I got it in, and the bottom of the holster technically had this little cutout here. Um, but it 100%, the threaded barrel will get stuck on that cutout. Customer service lied to me, and then gaslit me in the emails thereafter. I told them that I spoke with customer service, and they said it would be fine. I'm pretty sure I had the emails at the time, or I just spoke with the woman. Um, and the next person I spoke with on the phone said, actually, no, it's not compatible. I'm like, okay, so you just wasted all of my time, right? I expect a certain level of honesty from the companies that I'm buying and supporting. And once again, this holster isn't terrible. I'm not saying it is a awful holster like some others out there, like this 43X that will get you killed, but they lied about compatibility and it's not nearly a uh, high enough quality for a $50, $60 product, $70 product, however much this costs, it's eluding me at this time. Um, so super negative experiences with Vetter. I don't recommend them. I'll make a video on the a larger video in the future. Let's go on to Filster. Once again, I'm not doing this in any specific order. I'm just grabbing the ones that are in front of me. Uh, this one is decent. This is very expensive. I'll put a picture on the screen right now, but my complaints are mostly going to be for the outside the waistband version. By the way, for anyone that doesn't know, this is their floodlight. So this is supposed to fit um, as long as you have an X300 on the firearm, it's supposed to fit basically any firearm. Now, the downside of that is there's obviously a lot more slop in the holster. I'm not necessarily blaming Filster for this, but 
the outside of the waistband version, I owned that for about a day before I refunded it. I wanted it to fit my Roland, maybe my 226, maybe a 1911, and a 2011. So a variety of sizes, but what matters is that when I bolted this onto my belt setup, when I had it outside the waistband belt setup, the retention was so loose that the firearm, no firearm, would even be able to stay in the holster while you're doing a light jog. And if you tighten it to the point where you're walking and it's not going to fall out, or you're jogging and it's not going to fall out, the holster would completely bind with the gun and it was just completely unusable. Now, I think it's acceptable on the inside of the waistband holster because uh, when you are having this inside your pants, it's gonna kind of clamp it down, put a little bit more force. Um, and obviously you're not gonna be running and a holster is gonna um, like fly out of that outside of the waistband version. But regardless, like Filster is making a holster that I wouldn't recommend to anyone. This one's okay. The inside of the waistband holster is okay. But the outside of the waistband holster, why are you guys even making it? It, it doesn't function. If a law enforcement person, or just take law enforcement out of it, if a civilian wanted to buy an outside the waistband holster that fit for uh, basically any gun, it, it, it completely wouldn't work. Because even when I tightened this up a ton, it would either completely bind the gun or it wouldn't have anywhere near enough retention. So why are you even selling it? Filster, drop it from the line. It's not worth anyone's time, just get rid of it. Off to the side, let's get on to my next manufacturer, um, T-Rex Arms. You guys know that I created a Raptor review a little bit ago, um, and in that Raptor review, I have my belt set up here with the um, uh, Ragnarok, but in that Raptor review, uh, the monoblock is just completely awful, right? I don't have it in front of me anymore, but the monoblock was completely awful, and the T-Rex Arms wing is a complete waste of time, right? It takes a really good holster that had really nice, like, I'm gonna say retention. It had a really nice, like, friction fit. It just felt very high quality, had a lot of customizability, but the monoblock completely ruined it. And the plastic clips from T-Rex Arms are absolutely awful they don't last i've actually broken a clip before a ton of people break those clips all the time they're really bulky they're easy to get on and off i guess but they're just nowhere near as good as other companies like this las one these are actually pretty decent um and then the wing that t-rex arms provides is just so fucking bad the tenacore wing by comparison is so much better um this las wing is so much better even that vetter wing was so much better so, once again, uh, Lucas Bodkin of T-Rex Arms says, oh yeah, I test all of my gear. So when I make something and when I endorse it, it went through 50 revisions and now it's good. Now I'm bringing it to market. Lucas, did you try the monoblock? The monoblock makes it so the gun, when sitting in your waistband, just does this. The, whenever you're walking, it's just rotating back and forth. Do you think that's going to, when you're trying to draw the gun, do you think having to guess where your gun is is a good idea? Ab Obviously not. Absolutely not. So, once again, what the fuck are we doing? Right? Why are we making a holster that costs $100? It is pieces of Kydex stapled together with, with rivets and screws. A holster probably costs $5 to make. Now, let's talk about holster price before I continue my rant on many other uh, holster companies. <sighs> This is a $1,000 gun minus the comp and the X300 and everything. A holster is going to cost between $100 and $200, depending on if it's like a sidecar style rig, like a tier one holster or a sidecar from T-Rex Arms. Are you legitimately telling me that your holster should cost 20% of this Glock 45 minus the X300 and the comp and this Acro? This is a reliable weapon system that has so many different moving parts and so many precision fit parts. We are bouncing light off of LED emitters, optical planes. Um, there's, there's a huge LED package inside of this Acro, and I'm expecting my Acro to be able to drop onto concrete and maintain zero. And I'm expecting my Glock to be able to survive fucking sandstorms and not be able, uh, like, not bind up without any lube, like... You just can't tell me, I know this is just an unhinged rant, but you can't tell me that a holster is worth a fifth of this. Let me just grab a different example. This EPS carry 
it's probably about three hundred dollars. I, I got it on a pretty good sale with um, uh, Red Team Armory. I really recommend them. Go take a look. But this EPS carry is probably about three hundred dollars, and this has been phenomenal. I'm gonna have a review of it on the uh, in the future. But this has a robust electronics package. It has to worry about delamination, keeping moisture outside of the lenses. It has to worry about being accurate and surviving thousands of rounds, um, auto off. There's so much technology that goes into this. And Hollow, Spons Hollow Sun spends so long developing their optics that you're telling me that your holster is even a third as complicated as this and warrants a third of the price of this EPS. Your holster should be $20. The profit margins that these holster manufacturers are creating are so fucking ludicrous. And once again, I know this is just an unhinged rant, but we as a gun community, we need to expect higher. Why do I expect this to be able to survive concrete drops and my Glock to be able to endure everything it goes through? Thousands and thousands of rounds. But when it comes to a holster, Oh, my shitty piece of plastic that probably costs a manufacturer $5 to make doesn't even hold my gun well enough. And oh, it's fine. Uh, Tenacore, which none of my guns are safe queens. I am really hard on my guns. Go look at my like Glock 43X views from before my prior slide. That side went to hell and back. But Tenacore sends this little uh, piece of paper, and most manufacturers do. I'm not trying to out Tenacore. But most holster manufacturers uh, send this little piece of paper that says, hey, your gun can't be a safe queen. A holster is going to cause holster marks. If your holster was sized correctly, and you guys did the bare minimum expected of you, I wouldn't have holster marks on my gun. Once again, I don't care about a little bit of a holster mark along like these sides, even though on this holster, it, there's just like so much Kydex being ripped out constantly that I have like a pound of Kydex every time I draw my gun. It's, it's actually insane. But any other company on the planet or any other uh, just like item on the planet wouldn't be able to get away with this. If Holosun sent me a dot and they said... Hey, by the way, your dot maybe like a couple MOA off, but it's okay. Like it'll it'll break in over time. Or hey, like our, our gluing on our lenses is awful, right? Trishicon has a knack for having like glue problem. Not a knack, but you'll get an RMR every once in a while with kind of like bad glue. Or the acro will have bad glue. I've talked with a representative about that. I'll talk about that in my review. And that is generally unacceptable. Aimpoint will take that optic back. Hollow Sun will take the optic back and they'll just send you a new one. Because they're a good fucking company. Meanwhile, these holster manufacturers are like, oh yeah, our, our draw is, uh, your draw is completely fucked up because uh, our tolerances are terrible and we're just like not paying attention and we don't like know what we're doing behind a CNC machine and our initial schematics are awful too. Oh yeah, that's perfectly fine. It'll wear in, bro. Like, no. I, I expect a higher level of competency. I expect... The sun is just attacking me right now. I expect a higher level of, of fitment for something that is going to potentially save my life. And we, as gun people, we need to put our feet down and be like, you are charging $100 to $200 for a holster. And you are not delivering a good product. And I have an issue with that because I expect a high level of with with all of my things this leatherman right here this is a 100 ish dollar leatherman and this is <laughs> like you can't look at this with these precision machined pieces and tools all over this leatherman and be like oh yeah this holster is just as good this little piece of plastic yeah it's just as high quality it's not it's simply not even high quality holsters like tenacore should be 20 dollars and, you know, that's capitalism, right? Like, I expect people to take advantage of, of our capitalistic society, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like, if you make a, a good quality holster and it looks cool like this one and you want to charge 100 bucks and people pay it, that's fine. But if you're going to charge me $100 and fuck me in the ass with these prices, I expect a very high quality product. And I'm just not getting that from anyone. Let's continue the list. You know what? Like I said, this is a shitty video, so I'm looking at another screen right now. 
Uh, Tenacore. Time to rant on Tenacore. Tenacore is probably the best one. Tenacore, you're not watching this, but you know what? If anyone over there is watching this and anyone has a Tenacore and they want my opinions on them, Tenacore is great. They're probably going to be the next manufacturer I'm going to buy because they deliver a good product. The Kydex quality is like really high. I don't know why. Their Kydex must be made from something different, but I just, I always notice how like slick it feels and just how high quality it feels. But let's talk about issues. They're $120. Tenacore, you guys are great, man, but I would love to see that at 60. And I don't, I, I would love to know your profit margins. Email me, I won't share it online if you don't want me to. Email me your profit margins. Just because I'm curious. It, it must be 95% profit margin. Which, capitalism, but Glock isn't making that much money off their Glocks. Like, even something egregious like Night Vision doesn't have that high of a profit margin. Like, I swear to God, these holster manufacturers are making 99% margins, and we're just, like, completely eating it up for, for no fucking reason. Um, Tenacore, uh, they don't have paint options, right? I don't really care too much about if my holster looks cool, but Tenacore, for $120, why don't you guys put cool, like, camo patterns that are, like, high quality and just, like, make us feel a little bit better about our purchase, right? Uh, paint costs cents on the dollar. You could rattle can the holster for all I care green, which would cost you roughly a cent and a half in paint, and I'd be content. Or you could Cerakote it, or you could dip it like some of these, or you could vinyl it, and then maybe you would convince me that your holster is worth $120, which, by the way, Tunicor, I still love you guys, but I need to call out shitty behavior. And, like, why isn't there a paint option? What else? Um, oh, why aren't there specific options? Uh, on your website, you uh, when you get into their straight line holster that doesn't have the hump, that's completely incompatible um, with a lot of people's like bodies, myself included, why is it just the Glock 48 with a TLR7? Why don't you have a 43X option that has a open tip, uh, open tip to the holster so I can use a comp, right? Sure, it'll be slightly hotter when I put it into my pants and whatnot, but... Like, how much effort does it take you guys to, like, Dremel that piece off? Or to just have a couple more uh, options on the website, right? Um, it, it's just like, and, and they say on the website that, oh, it's to prevent, like, holster tipping. Because a longer holster makes it so it sits more, uh, like, flat against, like, your body. And, like, I'm not an idiot. Like, I, I know that that's bullshit. I know that it's just, oh, we don't want to make another type of holster. And that's fine. If you just say that, like... We just don't want to make a second type of holster for that because, you know, like, we don't see as many, like, requests or whatever, so we just have the one, um, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's fine, but you're not going to bullshit me and tell me that it's because of holster tipping because the light is already there, so it's going to prevent the holster tipping. And also, holster tipping is bullshit. I carry a Glock 43 in a tiny Vetter holster that I yeeted across the ground, and holster tipping is never a problem whatsoever. So, like, like I know that that's BS. You, you can't scam a scammer. And every one of us are scammers, man. Um, what else did I put? Uh, yeah, the wedge is terrible. Oh, lastly, I want to talk about warranty. Because Tenacore is an example of a good warranty. Once again, Tenacore, I know you guys think I'm being mean to you guys, but just hear me out. LAS Concealment. They won't fucking holster it. Uh, they won't uh, warranty anything, apparently. So they just blatantly lie about their warranty. The T-Rex Arms warranty was okay. Vetter warranty was a pain in the ass to discuss uh, all my issues with someone for... I had to like, speak with five different people to just get my holster back to them and then get my money back. I think I had to pay for shipping. Tenacore? I had multiple holsters, and I got the ones with, like, the hump, like the Malice Soul and the Sajax Lux. Great holsters. I'm not saying don't get them, but, uh, or, and also to compound how good they are, I warrantied them, like, a year later. Uh, I said, hey, I think I've, like, gained weight or something, and that hump just isn't working for me. You guys have a lifetime warranty. Can I really send that back and get a refund? They're like, yeah, send it back. We'll give you full refunds on everything. That's how you do a warranty, man. Like, that's how you do it. Now you're you're bridging the gap a little bit closer to that $120 price point. But even then, that is still stupidly high. Also, Tenacore, why don't you give us the option of having DCC clips or monoblock or this plastic clips or a couple of... You guys used to have different clips. Why are those no longer, uh, like, customizable in your cart? Right? So you see how, like, manufacturers are just, like, getting away with dumb shit constantly. Um... 
here's another one. Uh, I'm just looking at my list right now. Henry Holsters. I wanted to buy a Henry Holster uh, Ember, I think is what it's called. And I'll put a picture of it right here. They look like pretty high quality holsters and I've seen good reviews online. I even asked them, I was like, hey, do you guys want to like send me one just so I can like review it and kind of get like my thoughts on it? But uh, they won't do that, which is fine. I get it. But I'm a very small YouTuber. But I, it's $98, which $100 is their free shipping uh, line on their website. If you can spend $100 and they will do free shipping. So they strategically put their holster two dollars under for the free shipping mark and you'd have to buy like a stupid fucking patch or you'd have to buy like a ten dollar item in order to qualify for shipping um and it comes with the mono block and once again the mono block is awful and it looks like it has the same issue as t-rex arms where t-rex arms didn't really account for the fact i think that people are going to be using the mono block so the mono block is actually up on like a ledge i'll put a picture here it's up on a ledge and it means there's going to be a ton of dead space in the belt right so what that's going to do is it's going to allow it to just flip flop back and forth okay but they allow you to swap to tier, uh, not tier one concealed, but the, the, the dual like overhooks, the metal ones that Tenacore uses for like a $20, $10, $20 upcharge, but you're still going to be sent the mono block. So why don't you just allow us to change to the DCC clips instead of buying a mono block and having to replace it and waste that five or ten dollars and also that would give us the free shipping and i know the answer it's because you know your profit margins are so fucking high that if you then also make them buy the dcc clips above that your profit margins get even higher i swear to like guys this is predatory behavior and once again, no other companies are doing this. Trichicon and Glock and Hollow Sun and Sig Sauer and all these companies aren't getting away with this. Because if they tried to put out these types of like issues with their guns, people would shut them down and like not buy their product. But holster manufacturers are getting away with it because I don't know if they've like cornered the market or something, but I, it, it's it's just disgusting. Um, I have another note, my summer special by Milt Sparks uh, for my Colt Gold Cup in, in the other room. I posted about this on 1911 Addicts. I ordered a uh, Milt Sparks summer special and it came in and my gun is kind of like sharp. And when I put the gun, I think it was marred beforehand, but when I put the gun in the holster, um, it kind of like ripped the inside of the holster. And then second of all, uh, carrying appendix was just completely like unusable, even though I've seen a lot of posts saying that you can carry appendix, but the gun was tilted at such a way that that just like wouldn't be possible without breaking your fucking wrist. Um, that could be my fault. Maybe I should have done more research, but like the leather, I'm pretty sure it came to me uh, kind of fucked up, but let's just assume it wasn't and I caused the problem. Your leather isn't treated. This is a... 100 to 200 i'll put a picture on the screen but i think it's a very expensive holster like 150 dollars or something and your leather isn't treated whatsoever i could take a knife to some leather couches and upholsters and just like everything and like barely make a scratch on it but your leather my shitty or my cold gold cup national match which wasn't even that sharp uh ripped up the inside of the holster you didn't put like a wax coating or any type of treatment. Did you slaughter the cow two hours before you sent me that holster? Right? Like once again, and by the way, the guy was great. I posted to uh, 1911 Addicts and everyone memed on me and said I was an idiot. The guy actually uh, emailed me and he was like, hey, I'll, you know what, just send it back and I'll leave the cost. It's whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. So I'm not shitting on Millet Sparks because they had good customer service. But like, why did the holster come to me like that? Right? Oh, and, uh, and uh, the snap buttons were awful, too. They, like, didn't work. They would just, like, pop out half the time. If my trigger and my Glock popped out half the time, Glock would be in a court case. But holster manufacturers can just, like, get away with it. So, I don't know, guys. Like, like I said, this was such, like, an unhinged rant. But you know what? Like, I, I made the channel so I can amuse myself and so I can just tell people my shitty experiences. I'll have better reviews in the future, but like, am I crazy? I I am I seriously expecting too much from these holster manufacturers? Do you guys think that 
I'm the asshole for thinking that this $120 holster that's only job is holding the gun securely. And like, guys, this isn't... This is $120, and this TLR7 right here, our TLR7 sub, is roughly the same price. And like, the paddles are great, it's an electronic device, the, the screw is fantastic, everything is so nicely machined. And you just can't tell me that a holster is anywhere near the quality of this TLR7, or this, uh... This Glock 45 right here, this is a KKM barrel and this is a KKM comp, that's only a couple hundred dollars. Holsters can match the price of this. And if you're just looking for the barrel, holsters can definitely match the barrel. And this is capable of printing ridiculously tight groups of 25 yards. And it's just like, it's so like precise fit and everything is so great. And I can tell that like so much engineering went into this. And then I look at a fucking holster and the only thing the holster manufacturers have to do is put a gun in here and then apply that's the wrong holster completely but then like apply heat to it and then make sure that it kind of like molds around the gun and then they just take that and they upload it to a machine and now they're making 98 percent profit margins and we're just gonna sit here and be like yeah this is okay i i like i, I just don't get it so please chime in down below like if it's just me if, if i'm the idiot if i'm the idiot for thinking that these holster manufacturers should be charging 30 dollars or 50 dollars and what's funny enough is you can find these holster manufacturers on like etsy that are selling holsters for a really nice price and like you can tell that they're just like a startup shop like just trying to make good holsters and make good quality stuff i'm at the point where i'm gonna start doing this get this video to 500,000 views i'll put every single cent i make for monetization if this even gets monetized i'll put it into a manufacturing like 3d printer and i'll make you guys holsters for 20 dollars. i don't even care if i lose money on it because like it, it can't be hard to just offer decent customization and decent kydex and then just ship it to the person and like that's it 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 really can't be hard so i don't know i, I don't have anything else to rant about um i'm probably going to be buying a tentacore holster once this chargeback goes through if i win the case if i don't i'm probably just gonna sell it for a 99 loss Tentacore, if you guys watch this, I'm still going to use you guys. You guys are probably the only ones out there that actually deserve my money. But, and like, even then, I still have problems with your certum line. Why not just have the certum be an open bottom and have it be molded for a 43X? And then the comp can just push through the bottom. Who cares if when I put the gun in my pants after a couple hundred rounds, it's a little hot. I can just leave the gun on the fucking table for an extra 10 seconds. Like, guys, this, this isn't hard. I, I expect a basic level of just like understanding and a basic level of like not fucking me over and i just feel like holster manufacturers get away with so much that no other company would my nods for i'm done ranting just stay tuned for the next video um i'll be talking about the clock 45 rolling special concept which by the way is the absolute tits this is such a good gun um i'll be talking about the eps carry which is a phenomenal dot so far things that are actually worth your money and uh i don't know i'll i'll, I'll try to not become an alcoholic between now and then because these manufacturers are just fucking pissing me off so uh thanks for stopping in so this has been alex with armadillo armament i've got nothing else to say other than holster manufacturers just Come on, guys, put in some effort. Um, chime off down below if you guys have any shitty stories, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.